See, one of the most beautiful aspects of painting with watercolor is how you can use its transparency to capture light. Hello, my friend. My name is Colby Bloom, and today is day eight of my 10-day watercolor challenge, World of Color, and I'm so excited about today because we are painting one of those just beautiful, luminous, ethereal forest scenes where you're looking at this huge grove of trees and only a part of it is lit up. So you can only see a part of the trees as if it's like one sunbeam is lighting up part of the water and part of the trees. And the thing about this scene is you're going to look at it and immediately think, oh, there's no way. There's no way. There's absolutely no way I can paint that. But I want you to trust me because by using the steps that we know about watercolor, how to capture light with watercolor. We're gonna start light and then we're gonna gradually build up. And instead of painting actual trees, we're just going to paint an imitation, right? We're just going to paint the texture of what trees are supposed to look like, slowly building up the layers so that even if you don't paint a single tree, it will still look like a grove of trees that's lit up by this brilliant sunbeam. It's gonna look super cool and I'm really excited to do this with you. This tutorial is called Light in the Forest and let's go. So I feel like my theme for these challenges is always, this looks like very intimidating and it might be a big mess, but remember that you don't have to paint everything that you think you have to see, right? So that's still the theme for today. We're painting this grove of trees where you can see like they're lit up, maybe from behind, maybe from a sunbeam coming on, shining onto them, I'm not sure, but they're lit up and surrounded by darker trees. And the thing about painting with watercolor is that that combination where the center is light and the edges are dark, that is tricky. And so one of the things like to remember is in order, to, you can't just paint light trees, right? You can't just paint light trees and then have dark trees surrounding them with watercolor because watercolor is transparent, right? And so it, this is trickier. Another important side note is I actually did this same project with gouache on my YouTube channel like two years ago. Um, this is easier to do with gouache because with gouache, you can just paint light things right on top of each other, but we're trying to do it with, with watercolor. And so doing it with watercolor, the main principle is we're starting light, very light, and then we're slowly building up darkness, right? We're slowly building darker and darker layers. We're also starting with big blurry layers and then we're slowly adding more detail. And we're not painting individual trees, we're just painting textures. We're just making it look like, like we're implying that there are trees here. So um, I prepped my, my, my paper, I put a piece of tape um, to separate where the forest is and where the lake will be about a third of the way up. And then I got my forest part wet with clean water. Um, because remember, to start light, we're going to use lots of water. So at first I started with some jadeite and I added a little, some water to it. And I realized that this wasn't quite light, like instead of just only using light value jadeite, I also wanted to use like more of a yellow green. So, um, but what I'm doing right now is, you know, adding zigzags, basically like vertical zigzags and then blending them in with water. And we're gonna do that so much. <laughs> so much this scene. So I added a little bit of lemon yellow deep to my jadeite to make it more of a yellow green, like a very, a fairly bright yellow green, and then a lot of water in it. And I base I used a size number six to kind of just do zigzags all the way across. Now remember, the center of this scene is going to be the lightest and the edges are going to be the darkest. And so the most important thing is to preserve the light space in the center. So I added a little bit um, more jadeite. Uh, I accidentally added Cascade, but I really, I'm using jadeite in this scene. I added a little bit more jadeite so it's slightly more pigmented. I'm still not going super dark yet, okay? But I added a little bit more jadeite so I'm getting a little more pigmented. Then I added a little bit more lemon yellow deep to add a little bit more uh, yellow green to it. And I'm slowly getting darker 
especially around the edges, but I'm leaving behind little pockets of white space. That's why I'm painting in these kind of zigzags, right? Because I'm not trying to just like make a flat wash. I want it to look magical. I want it to look like the light is flickering through the trees. So in order to do that, in order to get that flickering light effect, I need there to be some spots, uh, even along the edges where there are lighter layers shining through. And that's where zigzags are just your most effective tool, your most effective shape to paint to get a natural movement in pretty much any nature scene. So one thing that I kind of experimented with too is while these zigzags were still wet, I just dropped some clean water. Uh, you could also splatter some clean water, but I dropped some clean water to kind of push away the pigment so that you can see the white of the paper underneath um, as another way to have some of those light layers come through. Now, as we continue painting, we're gonna mostly paint over those, but, but it's still a fun thing that you can do. Um, because when you're trying to get that flickering light effect, uh, with watercolor, it's what's called luminosity, right? You're trying to preserve the luminosity of the page, and that means preserving the white space, like basically at all costs. So up until the very end of this forest scene, we're gonna try to keep that center as light as possible. And one of the ways to do that without getting it all like muddied is to work in layers like this. So I let that layer dry, and then I re-wet it with clean water. And now I'm adding in some more yellow green. Um, some very, very light, right? Meaning it's very, very yellowy, uh, yellow green, and still fairly light value with lots of water. Then I added, I'm putting some jadeite on my palette, more jadeite, which is like a dark green color, right? And I'm slowly starting to get darker and darker around the edges. Uh, now, I do want some tiny little like strokes of dark in the center, but as you're adding dark strokes in the center, you need to be careful not to add too many. Like it's better to add too few than to add too many because you might accidentally cover up the light spaces that you need. So I've moved from a size six to a size two um, to slowly add more zigzags, to add more dark spaces. Uh, and I added a little bit of indigo to my jadeite. So it's like a really dark green color. And so you can see the very edges are really dark and then it slowly, slowly gets lighter until we have this kind of flickering light space in the middle. And that flickering texture is because we are using um, those zi that zigzag motion, right? Then I got my foliage brush and I created some kind of light yellow green and I added just a little bit of foliage texture all the way across. It didn't really do a whole lot, but we're still, we're going to continue adding that texture um, throughout. So at this point, I feel like I, I mostly have the lights and the darks where I want them to be, so I'm adding details. And on some of those trees, I'm imagining like maybe this is where a tree might be. So I'm gonna like outline where I think a tree might be using some like some like little wispy tree textures, just some marks, just marks going all the way around. And the reason I haven't slowed down to show you exactly how to do this is because I kind of abandoned my whole like, this is where a tree would be. And instead I just started adding marks. I just started saying like, you know what? It doesn't matter if this looks like it, like very specific trees. If there are trees, you can definitely make out. What matters is that we have the texture there. So I added some very light value texture, and then I started adding a little bit more dark value to add some, um, some darks, especially uh, in the center there. And then I started adding more of that like evergreen texture with slightly darker pigment. And um, sometimes in, this, in those center trees, right? And then other times um, scattered throughout. And throughout this project, it's very important to note that lots of times I thought to myself, this is not going well. <laughs> this is, people are going to paint this and they're going to think, wow, this person does not know what they are doing. And you know what? That is the magic. I don't, <laughs> I really don't know. I was leaning on uncertainty heavily here. I was leaning on the fact that like, if I just slowly start light and then gradually grow dark, everything's gonna be fine. And then adding some texture and, grad and using the texture to imply what I want to be there. Those are the things that I was relying on, even though to me, it didn't really seem like they were coming together in the way that I wanted. And that's okay. So now I decided before I like, 
I mean, I still have more foliage texture to add, but I decided to start adding the trees. This is where I am using white gouache. Uh, so this is Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. I mixed a little bit of cerulean with it. So I added, on my palette, I have like a lot of white gouache and then I mixed just like a tiny little brush, like a tiny little bit of cerulean to make the white gouache slightly tinted blue. Um, you don't have to do that. I did that just based on, uh, just to make it not quite so stark. Um, and then I'm just like using a very light pressure. I'm slowly adding... I'm dragging my paintbrush from bottom up to paint these trunks on the side and also in the center. This is my round number two. I also could have used a liner probably if I wanted to. And some of the trunks are just straight lines. Some of them are forked at the top, right? But I'm adding them all around. I'm adding, a, I'm adding them in the middle and I'm adding them on the side and I'm adding them I'm adding them not like they are one long line, but rather as if there are like a bunch of small trees layered on top of each other. That's kind of the effect that I'm going for here. And so after I added like a bunch of trunks all the way around with that white gouache, I took my foliage brush again, and particularly, lo particularly along the edges, I took some pretty dark value jadeite and added so that foliage texture all around the edges and then just a few dabs of that foliage texture in the center. Because remember, I do want to have a contrast uh, with light and dark in the center, but more than anything, I want to preserve the light. So one kind of interesting experiment I did is I decided to try painting one tree, um, making like mixing a little bit of cerulean with the white gouache and painting it like I would normally paint a tree. And then I took some of that white gouache and I added some highlights on that tree, but then I decided like, this does, does not really look like a tree. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, like I said, I was experimenting. And um, I think adding the highlights was a cool way to uh, make the shimmer pop even more. So then I took the white gouache and I added along the line of that tape, I added what is going to be rocks, right? Some white rocks uh, with the gouache. And then I took some of that jadeite and I put some shadows on the rocks. This was basically scumbling. Like that was basically me making random marks. It's important to note. I wasn't like, this is a rock and this is a rock. I was more like, this is a random blob and here's a random blob and here's some more random blobs. And when you zoom out, those random blobs together looked like they were rocks <laughs> shining on this riverbank, right? So that's the trees, that's, that's the tree line. Now I'm using a flat brush. This is a Da Vinci flat number eight. I'm using very, very, very light, very watery thalo, uh, thalo turquoise and um, I'm using the dry brush technique to try to get a dry brush texture so it looks like there might be some like sparkles or ripples or whatever. So the very bottom of the lake, I want to be shining really, really light. I want it to look very light. And I mean, the bottom meaning the, the top of the lake closest to the trees, right? And then the bottom is going to be more of a darker tallow turquoise. And then I'm going to use, while that wash is still wet, I'm using the side of my flat brush to just pull down and kind of create reflections of the trees in the water. So I'm going to repeat this maneuver lots of times where I'm adding color to the river. And I started with that light value at the top and then added dark value toward the bottom and then just use zigzags to like blend the colors together. Then I used a thirsty brush. So this is my flat uh, round number eight brush, the side of it to lift in the wet wash so that it looks like there is a reflection of the trees in the wet wash, but just like the trunks of the trees. And then um, I let that dry, I re-wet, and I'm going to add some darker color here. Uh, so I added some indigo to, you know, whatever else is on my palette, and I'm gonna use zigzags to paint all the way across. Um, it's, remember, this is darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. And the very loose zigzags are going to help me um, maintain the layers and the depth that I've already created, right? And while that wash is still wet, I can add some green to it. I can add more turquoise to it. Um, I can add more indigo to it. I can even take my flat brush and repaint, um, repaint those uh, reflections that kind of have been erased, right? And so that's what I meant when like, 
we're painting the water and then we're lifting the reflections and then we're painting more like zigzag on top of the reflections. And it's this dance where we're slowly building up depth because we're adding paint and then removing it and then adding more and then adding more movement. It's building up depth. And uh, this slow process is gonna be messy and it's gonna feel like this looks gross. But then here's the trick. Here's the trick to this painting and to all paintings actually is leave your painting, let it go. If, especially if you are so frustrated, just let it be, step away, right? Step away for 20 minutes, for an hour, for a day, come back and see if you still feel the same about it because I really think it is better than you think it is. And even if not, giving yourself that time to step away from it is going to help you get into that, well, I'm learning phase, right? So on that note, let's go to the loved and learned because that concludes this light in the forest project. I loved the color palette. I love the turquoise and the greens together. I just thought it was so stunning. Um, and actually I loved the forest texture, even though I don't think you could make out a single tree. I think that it really worked. Um, I love the gradient in the rate. I love the gradient in the lake and I loved how the rocks came together. Um, adjusting expectations it's, is okay. That's what I've learned. It's okay if I wanted to paint trees and really all I could paint was tree texture. That's okay. You just need the shapes and the marks. You don't need the accuracy and um, start light and grow darker is the main, my main guideline. Start light and grow darker. All right, thanks for painting with me and I'll see you next time.